hi students how are you so my suggestion is take care of your health because this is the exams time so much pressure on your uh, shoulders at first take proper diet and follow the precautionary actions uh, health is wealth so don't feel pressure by because um, throughout the year uh, you have been struggled a lot and this is very crucial time uh, which you uh, give something to your parents okay now in this uh, exams time you need to focus uh, more on your health and revise whatever uh, uh, planning you have done for the coming 3 or 4 days uh, to the neat exam okay follow the planning and follow the timetable properly and follow the schedules properly and then according to your planning schedules uh, uh, covering the subjects a uh, four subjects also very very important uh, okay so at first almost each and every student uh, focus towards botany zoology chemistry last but not least uh, physics so for oc student or whatever uh, reservation category students uh, whatever the student uh, category but you need to get at least 80 marks at least 80 marks in physics okay It, that helps to you a lot the student uh, who is ready to get uh, 500 marks 500 marks then for him also at least this uh, physics uh, 60 to 80 marks can give the boost up right so for that no need to hurry in the entire question paper out of uh, 50 questions of question paper of physics uh, easily easily you will get uh, 20 questions uh, 20 questions uh, at least 20 questions uh, uh, having a very very basic concept uh, without any fear without any fear you can focus uh, the question paper then easily you will get uh, 20 into 4 80 marks uh, for that i am giving a small planning to you the first planning is nothing but uh, the first planning is after uh, taking the question paper while at the time of doing the physics uh, at first do very easy questions uh, very easy questions how come you guess that is very easy question the question which has two to three lines uh, two to three lines uh, at first uh, focus on these questions uh, the question which has two to three lines at first focus on that question okay why because two to three lines you psychologically you will get a uh, confident uh, okay this is only two lines easily i will get uh, the topic and thereby i don't waste uh, much time towards the physics why because uh, uh, the time is uh, very very less at the time of doing physics by you right so for uh, almost uh, each and every student uh, follow the time table uh, at the time of exams also now the duration of the exam is uh, increased more than more 20 minutes sir uh. it means previously 3 hours duration now the duration is increased to 3 hour 20 minutes sir uh. okay that is very very important uh, uh, and uh, crucial time last 20 minutes sir uh, that plays major role to get the uh, good rank uh, good rank to the student uh. okay so for this uh, i'm giving a small tip uh, and that is very very e- easy questions uh. how come you guess see that's a easy question how come the question which carries two to three lines uh, that at first you can solve uh, like that questions are present uh, at least uh, at least 10 in the question paper at least 10 in the question paper okay so at first uh, you can complete these 10 questions uh, after that the next priority goes to uh like uh, conceptual questions like conceptual questions are nothing but those conceptual questions are at least uh, six questions in the neat question paper at least six questions so focus on those conceptual questions okay and then the third thing is nothing but uh, whether at the time of uh, doing or uh, at the time of reading the questions uh, um assertion and reasoning mask the following like these questions are present uh, after that you focus those questions uh, assertion and reasoning and match the following on these questions uh, you can focus and then easily you can cover 
10 plus 60, 6, 16, uh, and then uh, 4, 16 plus 4, 20, 20 questions. Uh. Afterwards, if any time permits uh, and go to the further questions, uh, then easily you will get more than 80 marks. Uh. So, getting 80 marks is uh, not a big task uh, uh, in physics uh, related to the NEET exam. Okay, then at the time of doing uh, sol problems, nothing but at the time of taking the calculations, uh, you need to focus on two things. Uh, one is nothing but uh, conversions. Some uh, So many students are committing mistakes at the time of uh, substituting the values in the formula. So whether all the values are given uh, in SI units or not, or CGS units or not, if all are not in SI method, not in SI method, you need to convert, convert all should be in SI method. That's a mandatory. All or or all should be in CGS method. That also mandatory. So any one method you need to focus. And moreover, the next thing is nothing but that's the first point at the time of doing the calculation. The second thing is nothing but uh, uh, for example, if any milligram is present. Uh, so by overlook, uh, just you take uh, this number, whatever the number is there in the bracket, that number you need to, you can uh, substitute in the formula. But this milligram is also very, very important. Milli represents 10 power minus 3 and gram also you need to consider 10 power minus 3 kz and that is nothing but 10 power minus 6 uh, minus 6 uh, kz. Minus 6 kz. Like that, you need to take some conversions. And at the time of taking the problems, you are in hurry, you know, you, you have a lot of pressure, uh, but but your aim is uh, very high. So, need to take uh, each and everything, uh, each and every second uh, is very conscious. Okay. So, take most uh, priority towards these conversions and substitutions. Answer. After taking the answer, in the options, you won't get the answer. Again, again, you need to convert the final uh, final uh, final uh, uh, answer what you got in the problem that you need to convert according to our options okay and that also one of the important uh, factor so if you focus all these things into consideration then easily you will get uh, more than 80 marks more than 80 marks in physics okay so once again i am saying take care of your health and take proper diet uh, and follow the schedule whatever schedule you planned for these coming days uh, coming days and get the success all the best and now so i am taking uh, the lesson atoms uh, in this uh, lesson atoms i am uh, i am taking a glance of uh, whatever the formula we have in the atoms with that you will get the idea idea uh, related to the lesson atoms right so at first very very important uh, factor in this um, Rutherford uh, gold foil experiment is present and regards to a Rutherford gold foil experiment, uh, this is the target nucleus, this is the target nucleus and this is ZE, Z is the proton number and E is the magnitude of the charge. Then one alpha particle is uh, coming towards the target nucleus. Alpha particle, this is the positively ionized helium is known as uh, alpha, nothing but having the positive charge having the positive charge okay now the nucleus also having the positive charge positive positive tripled it means the alpha particle reaches uh, nearer to the target nucleus um, and then immediately whenever the alpha particle reaches very nearer then immediately this alpha particle can deviates can deviates in the different directions okay then it means uh, whatever the distance uh, reached by the nu alpha particle nearer to the nucleus uh, nearer to the nucleus or whatever the closest distance uh, reached by the alpha particle nearer to the nucleus uh, and that closest distance is known as um, the distance of closest approach the distance of closest approach so at this point uh, what's the condition at this point where it deviates at this point the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is equal to potential energy between the alpha particle and the target nucleus potential energy between the alpha particle and the target nucleus so here how come we consider that listen it means uh, this is the kinetic energy kinetic energy of the alpha particle and potential energy kinetic energy is nothing but half mv square potential energy is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 
alpha particle having the charge is having the proton number is 2 so the magnitude of the charge is 2e and then here the nucleus the target nucleus is ze by distance is r naught as you know that potential energy is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r that is the formula for potential energy 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r q1 is nothing but uh, that is the magnitude of the charge of alpha particle alpha is nothing but helium 224 alpha is nothing but helium 224 what is the proton number here 2 so what is the magnitude of the charge 2 into e 2 e and then what about the new target nucleus proton number is z and having the magnitude of the charge is uh, z into e z e now i am calculating the r naught the distance of closest to approach r naught r naught is equal to how come we consider that 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 e into z e 2 e into z e by half mv square by half mv square okay this is the distance of closest approach very very important formula for calculating the distance of closest approach here half mv square is nothing but kinetic energy sometimes in the problem they used to mention kinetic energy of the alpha particle straight away they used to mention in the problem so in the place of half mv square you need to mention as a whatever the kinetic energy value given in the problem that you can consider right and then another important uh, concept is nothing but uh, impact parameter impact parameter so what is the impact parameter impact parameter is nothing but uh, here we are taking that here we are taking that and that also uh, taken from the rutherford gold foil experiment uh, and here the target nucleus is present target nucleus is present and then alpha particle is coming uh, from one side having the positive charge alpha particle also having the positive charge so now after moving this is the initial direction now somewhere here alpha particle from here alpha particle is coming then this alpha particle deviates like this deviates like this due to the repulsive force between the alpha particle and the target nucleus repulsive force positive positive so like charges repulsive force thereby here what happens deviates and now here we are taking that the perpendicular distance between the scattered alpha particle this is the scattered alpha particle in this direction scattered deviating so here we are taking perpendicular distance the perpendicular distance between the scattered alpha particle and the nucleus and the nucleus is known as impact parameter is known as impact parameter okay and now this impact parameter here we are taking that having the value as the impact parameter the impact parameter having the value that value also that formula also very very important uh, so for taking some constants uh, which are having proportionality or inversely proportional whatever it may be if you remember this formula whatever the content if they ask in the problem that you can continue right so impact parameter is equal to b is equal to having the formula is z e square into cot theta by 2 by z e square cot theta by 2 by 4 pi epsilon naught into half m v square half m v square and this is the formula related to the impact parameter so with this with this we are taking the concept it as the impact parameter value increases the value of the impact parameter increases by increasing the cot theta by 2 value cot theta by 2 if you want to increase the cot theta by 2 value the theta should be lowered the theta value has to be uh, reduced reduced for reducing values of theta cot theta by 2 is more if cot theta by 2 is more the impact parameter value also increases okay this is one thing and then the another one is nothing but uh, so when the impact parameter is equal to 0 when the b is equal to 0 so b is equal to 0 means what when this distance is equal to 0 here we had a uh, impact parameter so when this distance is equal to 0 0 is nothing but what exactly straight line exactly straight line to the nucleus then 
when it is equal to 0 it means when cot theta by 2 equal to 0 when cot theta by 2 equal to 0 if cot theta by 2 0 if cot theta by 2 0 then what happens 0 into anything equal to 0 when the cot theta by 2 equal to 0 when theta by 2 is equal to 90 degree when theta by 2 equal to 90 degree then this value equal to 0 at that time what about theta theta by 2 equal to 90 degree cross multiplication 90 into 2 90 into 2 that is equal to what's the value 180 degree theta is equal to what's the value 180 degree so for theta is equal to 180 degree the impact parameter is uh, 0 this can be happened for uh, very few alpha particles uh, retrace their path it means what retrace their path what is the meaning of retracing the path so instead of moving in the same direction here the target nucleus is present uh, the alpha particle the alpha particle moves backwards moves backwards so it means uh, retrace the path uh, nothing but whatever the path it followed in the same path it moves backwards then only we consider theta is equal to what 180 degree theta is equal to 180 degree so this is one thing then another important point in uh, rutherford gold foil experiment uh, how many number of alpha particles are scattered uh, per unit time it means uh, it comes very near and distracted so very uh, previously we have been observed what's that comes very nearer very nearer and distracted like that how many number of alpha particles are scattered per unit time for that also for that also here we have the formula then that is n is equal to number of alpha particles scattered number of alpha particles scattered n is equal to q n t z e square q n t z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught whole square r square e square sin power 4 theta by 2 this is the formula n is equal to q n t z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught whole square r square e square sin power 4 theta by 2 so just uh, recollect the terminologies uh, of this formula okay then q is equal to number of part alpha particles uh, incident number of alpha particles incident and then small n is equal to number of uh, atoms in gold foil what it gives number of atoms uh, in gold foil and then another one is nothing but t is nothing but it's not the time generally t represents the time but here it's not the time this is the thickness of the gold foil thickness of the gold foil and what about the z z is equal to atomic number of uh, the particular element uh, which you consider as a target nucleus atomic number of target nucleus okay then uh, one more thing r r is equal to what distance between the gold foil and the screen so previously here we consider this is the gold foil for example this is the gold foil and then here somewhere at some distance uh, uh, one screen is present uh, on that screen uh, these uh, scattered alpha particles will go and uh, touch the screen and collide with the screen and thereby that screen uh, will get uh, scintillations will give the scintillations scintillations nothing but small sparks once spark is uh, illuminated onto the screen then we will say that uh, one alpha particle uh, touch that screen like that uh, we can consider okay so r is nothing but here distance between the gold foil distance between the gold foil gold foil and the screen gold foil and the screen then what about that e e is equal to kinetic energy of the alpha particles once the alpha particle is moving that alpha particle has the kinetic energy that kinetic energy mentioned in the formula as a e okay and then theta is nothing but scattering angle scattering angle previously we said that theta is equal to 180 degree what's the meaning of theta equal to 180 degree it's it retraces the same path nothing but moving back in the same direction in which it follows uh, earlier 
right so based on this it's very clear n proportional to t thickness increases the number of alpha particles scattered per unit time also increases this is the number of alpha particles scattered per unit time n proportional to t n proportional to t and then next one n propor n is inversely proportional to this is the very very important factor sin power 4 theta by 2 sin power 4 theta by 2 then with that it is very clear that n1 by n2 is equal to here sin power 4 theta 2 by 2 second angle we need to consider sin power 4 theta 1 by 2 why because uh, here theta 1 and theta 2 are the two different angles which we considered at that time here if you want to take the ratio of number of alpha particles scattered per unit time can be expressed as n1 by n2 is equal to sin power 4 theta 2 by 2 by sin power 4 theta 1 by 2 and then and this is uh, so like that here we are taking the another one uh, next important topic is nothing but Bohr's theory what is the Bohr's theory so as you know that in chemistry also you will get that uh, Bohr's theory but according to physics whatever the requirements which we have uh, for doing the numericals uh, related to the Bohr's theory that we can discuss uh, as the formula and these are very very important uh, just by knowing these uh, easily you can attempt the numerical okay listen so according to the concept of uh, Bohr's theory Bohr's theory at first we are taking that Bohr radius we are taking the Bohr radius so what is the Bohr radius that is equal to Rn is equal to here we are taking the concept it has 0.53 n square by z Armstrong units it means this is the radius of the electron in the nth orbit so radius of nth orbit Rn represents what radius of nth orbit 0.53 n square by z Armstrong units so the Bohr postulates can be applicable for hydrogen so if for z is equal to 1 for z is equal to 1 so then uh, what's the value rn is equal to 0.53 n square armstrong units okay so what about what about the bore radius the bore radius is nothing but for first orbit for first orbit that itself here we are taking that r naught is equal to 0.53 armstrong units one armstrong unit is equal to what 10 power minus 10 meters so this also can be written as 0.53 into 10 power minus 10 meters okay this is the radius of the orbit radius of the nth orbit then afterwards the next one is nothing but the velocity of the electron which revolves in the nth orbit so velocity velocity of the electron revolves in the nth orbit revolves in the nth orbit so then for that here we are taking the concept it as vn is equal to velocity of the electron in nth orbit and this formula can be taken as vn is equal to c by 137 into z by n meter per second vn is equal to c by 137 c is nothing but speed of light 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second c by 137 z by n meter per second with that Vn proportional to what? Z by n. Vn proportional to Z by n. Okay. So now another thing. And here we are taking the next one is nothing but angular velocity. Angular velocity of revolving electron in nth orbit. Angular velocity of revolving electron. Angular velocity of revolving electron in nth orbit in nth orbit is so what is the angular velocity of revolving electron in nth orbit and that is nothing but omega omega n as you know the formula that is v is equal to r omega relation between the linear velocity and angular velocity v is equal to r omega then with that omega is equal to what's the formula v by r omega is equal to what's the formula v by r then this is Vn by Rn, velocity of electron in nth orbit by radius of nth orbit. 
so this formula here we are taking that uh, that value you should you will get it as 4.16 into 10 power 16 j square by n cube 4.16 into 10 power 16 j square by n cube radian per second that is the unit of uh, angular velocity so in the form of proportional if you take that omega n is directly proportional to j square by n cube just remember these these are very very important and whereas here rn 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 is directly proportional to n square by z this is also very very important rn proportional to n square by z and whereas vn is equal to vn proportional to z by n and omega n angular velocity of revolving electron in nth orbit also directly proportional to z square by n cube this is also very very important next with that we are taking that and what is the time period time period t is equal to time period 2 pi by omega t is equal to 2 pi by omega so here t is equal to 2 pi by omega it means t proportional to 1 by omega or inversely proportional to omega so what is the omega z square by n cube if you substitute in the place of omega as z square by n cube then then t proportional to what's the value t proportional to n cube by z square why because why because omega is in the denominator so if you write z square by n cube if you write z square by n cube in the denominator then that fraction can be reversed as n cube by z square the time period of the revolving electron in nth orbit time period of the revolving electron in nth orbit tn tn is directly proportional to n cube by z square okay and now the another thing next important uh, concept is nothing but in this and what about the frequency of the revolving electron frequency of revolving electron frequency of revolving electron and that is equal to what's the value f is uh, is equal to reciprocal of time period is called frequency reciprocal of time period is called frequency f is equal to what 1 by t 1 by t so f is directly proportional to as you know that time period is proportional to what n cube by z square if you place in the denominator this fraction can be reversed z square by n cube z square by n cube f is directly proportional to z square by n cube this is one more important concept and in the same way electric current also same thing electric current remember electric current when the electron revolves in the particular orbit uh, the moving electron moving electron varying electric field so here it means nothing but electric current is produced with the varying electric field current is produced so this electric current i is e, i is directly proportional to same concept z square by n cube remember this carefully i is directly proportional to z square by n cube so then you will get this value is in milli amperes milli represents 10 power minus 3 okay then afterwards magnetic moment magnetic moment so when the electron revolves the varying electric field produces the magnetic field and thereby magnetic moment is uh, produced that magnetic moment uh, m is equal to magnetic moment m is equal to general formula what is the general formula current into area of cross section ia current into area of cross section so this magnetic moment is directly proportional to n magnetic moment is directly proportional to n what is the n number of orbit okay so with this we are taking that bore magneton bore magneton is equal to 9.26 into 10 power minus 24 ampere meter square remember this constant 9.26 into 10 power minus 24 ampere meter square next so this is where these are the very very important points related to the Bohr's postulates and then afterwards here we are coming to the concept of energy 
the kinetic energy of the revolving electron in the orbit potential energy as well as total energy so now i am coming to the topic okay so now here uh, if you come across the if you come across uh, the total energy of revolving electron the total energy of revolving electron so what's the total energy of revolving electron and that is equal to that is equal to total energy represents what kinetic energy plus potential energy what is the meaning of total energy kinetic energy plus potential energy after taking that the total energy is equal to en is equal to total energy of the revolving electron in nth orbit en is equal to minus 13.6 z square by n square electron volts minus 13.6 z square by n square electron volts okay so total energy is equal to total energy is equal to it means this is the value with that here we are taking the kinetic energy kinetic energy is equal to minus total energy kinetic energy is equal to what's the form minus total energy so the total energy is in negative so the kinetic energy should be in positive why because minus into minus plus in the place of total energy if you write this minus into minus what's the value plus so kinetic energy is equal to minus total energy okay and then here we are taking the concept as uh, we are taking the concept as potential energy relation between potential energy and then uh, kinetic energy sorry potential energy as well as kinetic energy and total energy if you take the ratio potential energy kinetic energy and total energy that ratio is minus 2 is to 1 is to minus 1 Minus two is to one is to minus one. If you if it means it means if you multiply the total energy with the two, then you will get the potential energy. If you if you multiply the total energy with minus, then you will get the kinetic energy. This ratio is very very important. Potential energy is to kinetic energy is to total energy is equal to minus two is to one is to one. Okay, and then afterwards, very very important formula for calculating the. Uh, wavelength factors okay so if the electron jumps from uh, n1 orbit to n2 orbit from one orbit to another orbit if the electron jumps if the electron jumps then at that time how come we consider that so that is nothing but energy delta e is equal to delta e is equal to 13.6 13.6 z square into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square this is the formula in the place of delta e if you write hc by lambda e is equal to h nu in the place of nu c by lambda so hc by lambda it means from this we are taking that 1 by lambda separate then that value became as 13.6 z square by hc cross multiplication whatever the hc here that hc comes to here then hc into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square then with that 1 by lambda is equal to 13.6 z square by hc this value can be taken as 13.6 by hc exclusively 13.6 by hc this value is known as rydberg constant rydberg constant or z square into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square okay this is very very important formula 1 by lambda is equal to r z square into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square what about the rydberg constant what about the rydberg constant r is equal to 1.09 1.09 10 7 per meter 1.09 10 7 1.09 10 7 okay so this is a uh, one thing right so as you know as you know that uh, Uh, hydrogen spectral series uh, whereas in the chemistry first year also you got that uh, lyman series bomber passion bracket as well as p fund just you go through with that then you will get uh, very very easily then whatever the whatever the important topics which we had in uh, atoms uh, that i am discussing now okay so in case of hydrogen spectral series uh, 
hydrogen spectral series then uh, how come we consider that Lyman series Lyman so when you get the Lyman series if the electron transition takes place uh, from a higher orbit to the first orbit uh, higher orbit to the first orbit means what n1 is equal to 1 whereas n2 is equal to 2 comma 3 comma 4 and so on then whatever the spectral series is uh, under Lyman under Lyman series okay then uh, in this uh, Lyman series what about the maximum wavelength lambda max lambda max is equal to what's the value 12 12 Armstrong units that value can be taken as 4 by 3 R remember this remember this very very important the maximum wavelength maximum wavelength maximum wavelength can be done when the transition takes place from second orbit to the first orbit then these wavelength radi wave radiations can be emitted or released when the transition takes place from 2 to 1 second orbit to first orbit okay when the minimum wavelength of radiations can be considered lambda min lambda min so that value is nothing but 912 Armstrong units that is nothing but 1 by r when this uh, minimum wavelength of radiations can be released in the Lyman series uh, when the transition takes place from infinity to first orbit when the transition takes place from infinity to first orbit infinity to first orbit minimum wavelength of radiations can be released um, second orbit to the first orbit maximum wavelength of radiations can be released in the Lyman series whereas bomber bomber series so in the case of bomber series the maximum wavelength of radiations takes place nothing but initially we used to take how the transition takes place when the transition takes place from higher orbit to the second orbit electron transit from higher, higher orbit to the second orbit that means n1 is equal to 2 and whereas n2 is equal to 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma and so on n2 equal to 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma and so on then lambda max is equal to it means when the maximum wavelength of radiations can be considered whenever the transition takes place from third orbit to the second orbit third orbit to the second orbit maximum wavelength of radiations can be released then what about the value of lambda max that lambda max is equal to 6568 Armstrong units and then in the form of Rydberg constant 36 by 5R when the minimum wavelength of radiations can be released when the transition takes place from infinity to second orbit infinity to second orbit then minimum wavelength of radiations can be released then lambda min is equal to 3648 Armstrong units and then in the form of Rydberg constant that is 4 by R okay so the, like that the bomber series can be considered with a maximum wavelength as well as minimum wavelength then afterwards here we are taking the passion series passion so passion series is nothing but n1 is equal to 3 and whereas transition takes place from takes place from uh, fourth fifth sixth and so on okay the electron transition takes place from higher orbit to the third orbit uh, then the passion series can be released then in this case the maximum wavelength the lambda max can be considered when the transition takes place from fourth orbit to the third orbit fourth orbit to the third orbit okay then what about the lambda max value lambda max is equal to 18747 armstrong units or we are taking that 144 by 7r 144 by 7r then when the minimum wavelength of radiations can be released lambda min is nothing but from infinity to third orbit from where to where infinity to third orbit then in this case lambda min is equal to lambda min is equal to what's the value 8202 Armstrong units uh, in the form of Rydberg constant uh, that is 9 by r and this is the passion series and then come across the bracket so these are very very important uh, if you just take a look on this uh, then it is uh, easy to remember and recapture all the things whatever you have done in the earlier so bracket series in the curves to bracket series n1 is equal to n1 is equal to 4 and whereas n2 is equal to 5 6 7 and so on so on in this case how come you consider the maximum wavelength the lambda max is nothing but from the transition 5 to 4 5 to 4 
then in this case uh, what about the maximum wavelength uh, lambda max maximum wavelength of radiations 40477 Armstrong units uh, in the form of Rydberg constant 400 by 9 R 400 by 9 R right and then how come we consider the lambda min in this case uh, from infinity to fourth orbit from infinity to fourth orbit then in this case lambda min uh, is equal to 14512 Armstrong units uh, and in the form of Rydberg constant uh, we will get it as 16 by R then P fund P fund in this case n1 equal to 5 n2 equal to 6 comma 7 comma and so on it means uh, from higher orbit to the fifth orbit uh, if the electron transition takes place uh, then you will get this P fund uh, series uh, P fund series uh, right so in this case Maximum wavelength, lambda max, lambda max, from where to where, electron transition from 6 to 5. Then what about the value of this, that is 7, 4, 5, 6, 3 Armstrong units, and whereas in the form of Rydberg constant, 900 by 11 R. And then lambda min, what about the minimum wavelength, when it will be released from infinity to fifth orbit. Then in this case, you will get the lambda max. Uh, sorry in the in this case uh, you will get the minimum wavelength uh, that minimum wavelength is nothing but lambda min is equal to 22768 Armstrong units uh, in the form of Rydberg constant uh, and that value is 25 by R okay like this in case of the hydrogen spectral series uh, Lyman bomber passion bracket as well as P fund uh, so uh, what about the maximum as well as minimum wavelength uh, when the maximum and when the minimum wavelength of radiations can be released uh, and all these things uh, and this is the clear picture okay then if the electron transition takes place from uh, n2 orbit to n1 orbit uh, n2 orbit to n1 orbit uh, then uh, how come in, how come you know how many number of spectral lines are released uh, the number of spectral lines uh, the number of spectral lines uh, is equal to n2 minus n1 uh, into n2 minus n1 plus 1 by 2 n2 minus n1 into n2 minus n1 plus 1 by 2 okay so if you know which orbit to which orbit if the electron transition takes place if you don't know then immediately you know only higher orbit so from higher orbit if the electron transition takes place okay higher orbit to ground state higher orbit to ground state then immediately take the formula that is n into n minus 1 by 2 these many number of spectral lines are released it means what this is the concept related to the higher orbit to the ground state transition from higher orbit to the ground state and this is the concept related to if you know the higher orbit as well as if you know the lower orbit then this is the formula n2 minus n1 into n2 minus n1 plus 1 by 2 and this is the brief glance related to the whatever the formula which you have in the lesson atoms okay and thorough properly and uh, all the best